a little something to march with. That's that they'll 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 meander if we do that. Let's give them some a little beat to it, a little 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 movement. Come on, so come on, so I know it's unusual. I know it's unusual. But last last time I was here, fantastic. Tonight in the balcony, did you get a chance to sow? I don't want you to just be all, all thunder and no rain. I don't want you to just be all thunder and no rain. Make a lot of noise, but bring no rain. So we'll see tonight. Hallelujah. Has everyone had a chance to sow? Hallelujah. Everyone had a chance to sow? Fantastic. Everyone, everyone, every young person has had a chance to sow in the congregation, in the balcony, on the side. If you haven't had a chance to sow, just, just wave. If you haven't had your chance to give tonight, just wave. Huh? Cool. People on the floor, they need to move. Y'all need, need to move those people on the floor. They're about to get stepped on. You need to move the people on the floor. They're going to get stepped on. Because we're about to go buck wide up in his. It's peace. <laughs> it's about to get nuts. Bible says that he gave an offering. Bible says that he gave an offering. The ark had not even come to his city. The miracle had not even been revealed. The breakthrough had not already come. But he went six steps to be very careful with my baby. He went six steps. And when he got to the seventh step, he gave an offering, he just did that. And then he danced like he lost his mind. He went crazy. Now here's what we're gonna do. I've done this all over the world. All over the world, it is the craziest thing but when, I, when we do it, the anointing is going to run through this place like a windstorm. Because we have got the Davidic order of worship proper. We gave an offering, and now we're going to praise God like we lost our minds. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're going to do it together. We're going to do it together. 
We're gonna do it together. We're gonna do it together. We're gonna do it together. What we're gonna do, say excuse me to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, excuse me. Say, neighbor, excuse me. Because I'm about to praise God. Say, neighbor. You got to excuse me. Because I'm about to praise my God. Say, yeah. What we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to take six steps. We're going to, wait, wait a minute, we're going to take six steps. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. And when we get to the seventh step, when you get to the seventh step, see, seven is the number of perfection. Seven is the number of rest. Seven is the number where God sits down and says, I've got it going on now. Look at what I'm about. See, six is the number of man. Six is what you can do in your own strength. But when you get to the seventh step, that's when you start stepping into God's strength. You start stepping into the miracle man. Yay! Uh, so we're going to take six steps. And when you get to the seventh step, I want you to dance and twirl. I want you to leap with athletic acumen and I want you to start to shout around this house until the devil wakes up. Until the devil. Say, excuse me. Say, neighbor, excuse me. Say, I'm about to get my praise on now. Now, some of you who are kind of shy, take your praiser out, blow the dust off it, because you're about to use it right now. We're going to take six steps, and when you take the seventh step, I want you to go crazy up in this piece. On the count of three. One, two, three. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look what the Lord has done.
under my feet. Yeah. Under my feet. Yeah. He's under my feet.
grab your neighbor's hand. Grab your neighbor's hand. Say go crazy. Say it again. Say go crazy. When the devil gets in your face and tells you you're too loud, what you should do? When you get back to your high school, what should you do? When you get back to your church, what should you do? you to pray. Grab your neighbor's hand. I want you to pray over your neighbor tonight that the spirit of timidity, that the spirit of fear, the spirit that keeps revival in the church but does not affect the world. The Christianese and religion, religiosity, if that is the word. But the spirit of fear, the spirit of apathy, would fall off of your neighbor's life. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost, pray. Pray that God would send revival. To this generation, Shakanda will say to me, I did. Come on, pray. Don't get tired. Pray. Pray. You don't know what they're fighting back home. There's some ox waiting to get in their way. There's some oozers who are going to try and stop them. Come on, pray. I feel the Holy Ghost. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. God can do it. He can do it. He can do it. I've been crisscrossing this nation. I'm preaching in big churches. I'm preaching in little churches. I said, God, for the next four years, I want you to show me your body. Show me your body. I want to preach in white churches, in black churches, in Asian churches, in Hispanic churches. I want to preach in African churches and English churches. I said, God, sow me as a seed to the world. Sow me wherever you want me to go. 
Whatever you want me to do, whatever you want me to say. He said, Chris, I've sent you as a Samuel. I've sent you as a Samuel. I called you as a, as a child. And I'm sending you as a Samuel to anoint a Davidic generation. To anoint a generation of Davids. Who will not be afraid and will not be ashamed. And will slay the giants of their generation. He said, I'm sending you to find the forgotten child. I'm sending you to look for this child who's been left out in the pasture and tell them we will not sit down until they come in from the cold. We will not sit down. We will not sit down until David is in our midst. And I came to tell you tonight as a prophet, I play at preaching. They call me the Prince of Preachers. They call me Jake's, Jake's boy. And I've studied under a masterful preacher, but I'm really a prophet. And I came to prophesy to you tonight that even if you feel rejected, and even if you feel forgotten, and even if you feel like nobody understands you, and even if you feel like you don't fit in, and even if you feel like everybody's looking at you strange, even if you feel isolated, even if you feel ostracized, even if you feel locked away, you are David! You are David! Oh! And God's anointing is coming to your generation. And you, 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 yeah, you are going to do mighty, 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 mighty exploits for the Lord. You will establish kingdoms. You will kill giants. You will displace nations, you will do great things because you're not just going to be a worshiper, you're going to be a warrior. You're not just going to be a warrior, you're going to be a worshiper. And it's time. Bow your heads with me from the pulpit to the door. I'm going to pray for an anointing. Hey. I'm praying for an anointing. From the pulpit to the door. To invade your life. What I have is contagious. I have a contagious faith. And I'm praying that you get so infected tonight that your life would never be the same again. <laughs> Bow your heads, close your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is God? I'm praying for an anointing. <sighs> I'm praying for an anointing. To hit this place tonight. Rain down your anointing. Dispel our fears. Destroy our apathy. Infuse our spirits and brand us 
with your fire. Lay your hand on your head. I'm praying for a change in your thinking. God, just help us to stop thinking so dag blasted small. Help us to stop saying negative things about our own selves. I rebuke every negative word that's been sown into your spirit. Every can't do and won't be in the name of Jesus. I rip it up out of your head in the name of Jesus. Devil, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Every negative word goes in Jesus' name. Every can't do and won't be in the name of Jesus. Every negative word that has come from the mouth of somebody who should have known better, of somebody who should have said better. Every negative word that's been sowed by enemy and friend alike, in the name of Jesus, I rip it up from its root and declare in the name of Jesus that these that stand in this most sacred place are the head and not the tail. They're above only and never again beneath. They can do exceedingly abundantly above what they ask or even think. I'm believing God. that this will be the beginning of a new world for them. That they would be not only like the biblical David, but they would be like young David from my youth group. David who grew up to be a youth pastor who's now pastoring in Dallas, Texas. David who went from being a thug for the devil and is now a thug for Jesus. David. David. God, I'm praying that somebody tonight would decide to be the generation that will not be afraid and will not be ashamed to be called a fool by this world, but would rather be a fool for Christ. Call them to. That some young person would go home tonight and make some cold-blooded decisions make some some decisions it wouldn't just be a little church thing it would not be just emotions but that somebody would go home and decide to go crazy for Jesus in their hometown in their own family and in their own world, Father, let it be, let it be like another David. I was in Virginia Beach, Pastor. I'm already drunk. I was in Virginia Beach, and I finished preaching at a church, it's Calvary Church. It's Pastor's wife there. Pastor Janine was my Sunday school teacher, so I go to them every once, you know, every two or three years, just to, one, two, three years, just to see, just to hug her neck and and thank her for the seed she sowed in my life when I was a baby. And uh, I was there. And after I got finished preaching, the, the young man who's about to take over the youth group in September, his name was David too. And he came up to me after I finished preaching. He's still interning with my friend Mark Lawrence. But in September, this 21-year-old boy is going to be the next youth pastor of, of a church of 7,000 members. He's taking over in September. And he walked up to me and he said, Pastor Chris, he said, two years ago, two years ago, I wasn't really living for God. And you came to this church and I preached a message. It's called 
sold out or sell out. Because either you're sold out or you're a sell out. And he said, I was at Hampton University and I was doing my own thing. But when that message came, it came like a hammer and broke up the fallow ground in my life. He said, I went back. I went back to my high school. I went back to my campus, my college campus. He said, I personally led 1,000 young people to the Lord in one year. He made a decision, a cold-blooded decision in a meeting like this and went back and shook his world. So much so that the church heard about it. And the youth pastor said, when I sit down and take my seat, you are going to catch my mantle and pastor the youth of this church. He said, I've been walking with this youth pastor for the next last two years and I'm about to take the position and I wept because God had found David and I don't know where David is tonight but I came to tell you that if you make a decision to do the will of God he will show up and show off in your life you have no idea how God wants to go crazy in your life tonight. And so this fatherless son, born in the projects of Boston, crawled up from the inner cities, comes to you tonight in sunny Florida to tell you, why not you? Why not now? It starts today. Why not you? Why not now? It starts today. Let the winning spirit of Jesus stand up big in you today. In Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Before I take my seat, one, two, three, four. Come on.
God take this with you, friend. I said, don't you dare. Don't even think about not taking this home with you. Man, we got one more. We got one more day of this. Let me tell you something. And we're, and we're lucky. You know, here's a word for Hearts Ablaze. We're lucky. We get this all the time. We get this all the time. If you're from the Pensacola area and you don't come to Hearts Ablaze, you're crazy. We get this all the time. We're just as crazy all the time. But for all of you that are not from Pensacola, I, I, da I dare you to take this back to your pastor. I dare you. I dare you. I, I said I dare you. And then when some pew-sitting devil comes up and tells you we don't dance like that here, kick him to the curb. Poof. Say, honey, you may not like dance like that, but I dance like that. I dance like David dance. Oh, yes. I don't want to dance like, I don't want to, I don't want to dance like Sister Melba dances. I don't want to. I don't want to dance like some geriatric. Don't know what Jesus did for him, or either that, or forgot about it. I want to dance like David danced. I want a new dance. I was telling my wife tonight. I said, you know what, Holly? I said it's amazing. I said you guys will will shout and jump. There's so much funk in here right now. Nobody cares because we're all sweating. It's crazy. Hold on. But you know what? I don't care. Well, it's easy here, friend. What kind of dance do you got out there at home when all the shouting's done in here? You see, it's easy to dance like David when everybody's dancing like David. What, can you dance like David when you're the only one dancing like him? Can you go to your school and dance like David danced when nobody else even knows the dance steps? Dare I even say if you go to a Christian school and nobody's dancing like David danced, will you dance like him anyway? Anyway! Some of you are going to go back and your parents don't dance like David danced. Your pastor doesn't dance like David danced. The rest of your youth group that was too un, uh, that was too un, they, they weren't even committed enough to even come to this conference. They don't know how to dance like David danced. Your classmates, your coworkers, your neighbors, they don't know how. And you know what we need to do? We need to start a dance class when we get back. We need to we need to tell them. And when they say what kind of dance class, say well it ain't the waltz. And it ain't the foxtrot. <laughs> and it ain't the rumba. If it ain't the rumba, what is it? It's, it's dancing like David dance. So when you get back to your school or your church or your Christian school or wherever you are where people don't know, say it's easy. You can learn it in seven steps. Are you ready? One. Two, three, come on now, four, five, one more time, six, here we go, seven. 